All eight eyes studied the one so willing to walk into their own tomb. The creature that now threatened the hero was a crudely focused inferno of hatred and malice. If one raging beast was not enough, surely two were. second beast became motionless. The poor creatures, twisted by the corruption, were finally able to rest. The path to be cleared of the corruption and the of anguish, a protector, a being of stone made living. Finally free of the corruption's hold, Anaya Dyer gazed upon the Bergson, her emerald eyes weary with exhaustion. The manipulator of the disenfranchised, the leader of rats, with fingers sharp as daggers, and a soul lacking its humanity. chooses the life of a thief.
The crystal was calling the hero back through a path opened anew from the sacred city of Anai Raha, the spirit of wind and weather. Berkson felt a strange weariness as home beckoned. There they were. The creature roared, but flight was no longer on the hero's mind. The Bergson now stood their ground, ready to take action. Disbelief was not a strong enough word, and denial was not a luxury they could afford. They knew all too well that Grandma Margaret was gone. Nay Raha, the god of the free wind, now tethered to the ground. His voice to the people is now just the warden of his prison.
The air touched him, filling him and ruffling his feathers. He looked upon the Bergson, small and fragile, but so full of hope. Infectious hope. Perhaps this would be the last time. The tree of prosperity was withered after twisting away from Rhea's will. left behind the seed that the Bergsons were looking for. No time to waste. Mary was waiting. Years continued to crank on in the distance, for the city must survive. Even more soulless than before, without life, and as if none had ever existed within the gears, and a new road forward opened with the jewel of life. The Bergson stood at the gates of a nice Sarabah. Caution dictated, going back and informing the others. Ane Sarava, the architect of Terralava, and the creator of Jin, a machine meant to serve the land, not oppress it. Come <laughs> on. 
air became aggressive, the temperature rising as energy returned to the Mighty One and flowed through his veins. Anais Harava was free again. As the spirit gazed upon the family, he felt something different, something unusual. Perhaps this could indeed be the final cycle. Upon the throne, the mountain god U himself, without Rhea Dana's love, the darkness had swollen inside him, consuming and uncontainable. Heavy as iron and difficult to breathe in, the air burned their lungs. It was pitch black. The light meant protection and hope. And the Bergson had to rescue the others as well.
yet another light fending off the darkness. For now, time was short and haste was needed. The final battle was nearing its end. The Bergsons knew that this was the final step. Love must prevail over hatred. Supreme One.